and welcome to this week's top five. It is the week of October 26, 2017. I'm Christina Reese. And I'm Brandon Zach. And we are here in Dallas. We're at the Box Company in Dallas. Um, this is certainly one of my favorite spaces in the city. And the programming has been consistently good since it opened, I don't know, a year or so ago. Has it been that long? Uh, I'll have to look that up, but we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, number five, it's a nine-person group show at David Shelton. It was organized by Keith J. Verardi. Mm -hmm. uh, he lives and works in L.A. It's a lot of paintings in the show. A lot of the work is dealing with... Uh, bodies and what we look like or abstracted versions or representations of body parts in kind of odd situations. There are paintings that depict close-ups of noses, there are paintings that depict uh, breasts on telephones, floral arrangements that may be not so floral. <laughs> it's a good show, it's a really good satisfying show. I liked pretty much all the work in this particular show and he picked a lot of work by artists from all over who I didn't know and some of the work is really quite old it's from the 70s and maybe even earlier and uh, it's just kind of juicy so number four this week is Anthony Sonnenberg uh, Houston based artist but he's got a show at Conduit just opened last weekend you know he does these amazing super decadent ceramics they're incredibly intricate they're actually highly emotional as far as I'm concerned uh, the decadence is kind of both really generous and kind of aggressive at the same time. Because of the way this show is installed, you know, it, it's so easy to kind of overdo Sonnenberg's work because it is so decadent and so Baroque, but the show almost feels minimal in a way because a lot of these, uh, kind of his traditional form of the candelabra, they're stacked in a shelving unit that goes up the wall, so there really feels like a lot of open space and it gives some of his drawings and sculpture and there's also a video in this show that he did while in an artist residency. So that kind of way of installing the show gives the work actually a little room to breathe. Okay, so number three this week is in Austin. It's Icosa Collective. It's two of the founding members of this great art collective. It's uh, Bethlehem McConan and Adrian Aguilera. It's called uh, Yo Soy Akim, which means I am here. And what they've done is they, I really like this show. It's incredibly charming and it's also just really generous. But what they've done is they've zoomed out on the planet and, and turned it into kind of Spaceship Earth in terms of looking at issues about immigration and um, transnationalism. She's from Ethiopia, he's from Monterey, Mexico. They've both been based in Austin for a while. But it's looking at immigration issues, but through almost kind of the lens of NASA, of the globe, and, uh, and trying to put our problems and our issues into a certain kind of perspective in a very, I think, a very warm, way. It's a very associative show. It's not particularly prescriptive. It closes soon, so catch it before it comes down. It's worth it. Number two this week, we're here in Dallas at the Box Company. It's a show of works by Ludwig Schwartz. The show is called Some 20-Year-Old Works on Paper and Two New Sculptures, and that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Um, so all of the work this time, uh, before I came, some people were telling me about it, and it's all kind of in the middle of the box behind us. These older pieces, all these works on paper, um, this has been part of his practice, for lack of a better word, all these years. And these aren't just incidental things. This is stuff that he always is working on. They're very, very funny. That's one oh, thing yeah. that Ludwig always has going for him. They're abject. They look very fast, but they're very funny. The decisions are all still very carefully made and for kind of maximum irony impact. And then these two new sculptures in the middle of the room. Charles D. Mitchell was the curator of this show, uh, the one of the founders of WordSpace here in Dallas. In order to see the show, you need to make an appointment. Box Company is not just generally open to the public, but they're very uh, easy to get in touch with. They're very good about meeting you over here. If you want to see the show, you can absolutely see the show. So number one this week is Angela Callis. She's at the Reading Room. Angela Callis is a transplant here from uh, a, long, a long stint in Las Vegas. She's teaching at UTA. She's this great artist who normally does these big tough but super clean works and but what she's done this is a departure is these have these are basically exercises in perspective and they're lovely they're incredibly detailed beautiful watercolors of these little blue books the blue books were published 
um, from about probably 1919 to 1978, um, a Jewish atheist socialist guy in the Midwest released thousands of titles. It was in order to get literature and philosophy and ideas into the hands of the masses. They were tremendously popular. They probably reached their peak, I would say, in the Depression and then sometime after World War II. Um, but she, she collects these and then she does these basically portraits of, of these wonderful little books. And, and you know, the way that they're hung, they're also kind of grouped together. There's like an Edgar Allan Poe section that's, you know, the front of the book, the back of the book, and then like spreads of the book. It really kind of gives, it's, it's trying to give a full portrait. It's almost like a sculpture without being a sculpture. This is going to be a nice little intimate show, just a way to kind of quietly introduce this sort of thing. And um, that opens this weekend. It opens on Saturday night.